Tom Sherman, thanks a lot for the presentation here at Video Vortex uh, in Amsterdam. Um, your statement at the very end uh, I found was, was very provocative. There you said uh, video art as a practice kind of is in opposition to the web. You didn't say YouTube, or, but you made a very general statement saying the web. Yeah, I, I think what I was trying to say and what I said throughout the thing is, is that video is at the heart of many, many forms of communication. It is a, it is still on the ascent, right? And it'll be more and more predominant. But I think that even though video will be included in the web, whether it be YouTube or any other form, I think that video has the ability to, at least video art as a kind of a niche activity, has the ability to contradict what might be occurring in a more vernacular domain. In other words, you know, I, I, when I showed some of the images that I that I made myself, I think they're they're truly vernacular. They're mm -hmm. an amateur naturalist looking at spiders or whatever, yep. and they have value for me. Somebody in the art domain might say that that's not so interesting as an art form. To me, that's what's interesting about it. So I like, I like going to a point where each one of those individual messages may function on the web as a clip, etc. But they are a little bit different in the way that I frame them. You know, I believe that my own history perceptually is tuned in a way that's a bit different than, say, people that are coming to video right now. Now, you gave a specific definition of vernacular video. That's, let's say, the, the mainstream um, online video practice now of millions uh, of people. Some people tend to see that as uh, subcultural. In your definition, however, you see that the video art is the one that is kind of smallish. I'm not saying oppositional per se as a you know, political statement. But as a practice, it's 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 where, where where should we locate it? Should we say subcultural, minor? What terms would yeah, you use? Yeah. I, minor, of course, means it's not important. But it, I, I think that it maybe it is a, a kind of a difference that maybe uh, will be welcome. Okay? In other words, uh, you know, where I where I point out that the institutions that support art have naturally gravitated towards making video art more conservative. They wanted to relate to the rest of their loot, to their collections, etc. But I, I do think that video as a perceptual, perceptual instrument, people who have looked at it you know, effectively and over the long term have something to give in terms of an overview, right? even, in the, even in the minute uh, that they shoot. So I'm just saying, let's say it's a minority activity or it's a niche, right? But video art has always been endangered by all of the other uses of video. Video real estate, you know, video therapy. You know, there's so many important uses of video, right? You can join video with anything in the world and it works fine. Yeah. And video art has always been a peculiar territory. And, and all I'm asking is that that in a way be acknowledged and, and, and maybe be looked at as something useful to understand this broader cultural phenomenon. So rather than say uh, the, the commons, all of this activity in video, uh, the vernacular, is something that can be extracted and made into art, I th all I would like is that video art is part of that community and that it is seen perhaps as a difference that makes a difference and it may help people understand. That's why I was wel welcome to come here to talk about the history of this instrument as a, and, and, and I alluded to it as being a kind of like a our consciousness has become interrupted to such a great degree that we now have a kind of a, a perforated veil in our consciousness, which is our perception. Okay. And, and I'm just saying that video art can play a role in understanding uh, how that perforation has occurred and how our attention is being divided in various things. One, one of the problems that I see with the vernacular idea and the idea of putting things up on YouTube is it's no longer possible to compose a work in video have any downtime at all for people to interact with and think about it. Because you're in an advertising kind of mode where you're pushing image all the time that has to be intense and, and, and engaging. It has to be over in two minutes. It has to be very short. So this has really interrupted the whole idea of some kind of silence in the work, etc. And so that's a fairly dangerous thing. So a, a video artist might actually try to build that into a short work, right? And that might be something that they miss and that they feel pain in missing. They may introduce that, and that may be the difference that makes a difference that makes video art valuable in that domain. As a 
disruptive practice? I mean, uh, video has always been opposition. It's always, it has never been about money. About money. For me, it was always something that I loved because it gave me this crazy head trip where I could uh, use it cybernetically to understand the world, to go over things that I had recorded, to think about them. This is the real value. And I think this is the value that attracts people to the technology. It's not different from the day I started using it. It's still the value. It's like a, it's like, it's a perceptual atomic bomb. It's crazy what it does to your head. What McLuhan said that the instant replay was the great, greatest invention of the 20th century. And where he was wrong about a lot of things, he was right about it. Okay. I think we have to. Okay. Thanks.